just be right. All right, well, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. Yesterday we talked about identity, uh, who, the, answering the question, who am I? Today we're going to talk about the, the idea of authority, which is really asking the question, who, who am I listening to uh, or who do I trust? Okay. Um, don't let the word authority throw you off too much. All I'm saying is who, who am I listening to? Who, who am I assigning authority to in my life? Um, and that's going to happen a couple different ways in the college campus setting. Uh, but so specifically, I want, I want us to think about it in... Well, what, what we're going to think about it in a couple of ways. First, I want to start off by reading Psalm 1 to you guys. And we'll sort of circle back around to it a, a, a little bit. But this won't be like an exposition. Like I won't be preaching a sermon. But I do sort of want that to be a foundational idea for what we're doing. And I might reference, come back to it a little bit today and some tomorrow. Um, Psalm 1, God's Word says this, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law. He meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Um... We're going to talk today, and I want to recap a little bit from yesterday. We, I may have played a little bit too much into the stereotype of the, the bad things that you might get into in college and some of my illustrations, but let me say this. College is about positive changes, too. Uh, I, I don't want you to go to college only equipped or only, having only sort of been warned and warned and warned about all these things that you shouldn't do or you shouldn't get into or places you shouldn't go. Um, because I don't want you to go to college thinking the only thing about being a Christian in college is not doing things. Uh, what I want you to realize is that college is a great place for you to grow. Uh, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow as we talk about community and stuff like that. But uh, college is about positive changes. Lots of people emphasize what you should avoid in college. Uh, but you can do things, not just avoid things. You can grow by doing and practicing and experiencing uh, things that will areas of growth. Um, when you realize you're not who you thought you were, uh, you you get to grow. And that and and yesterday I used some examples of you know. You realize you're not who you thought you were when you realize you find yourself in places where you would have never thought you would be. That's not just physical places, okay? I didn't, and I use a lot of illustrations like that. When you find yourself in the police station, and when you find yourself, those are very extreme examples. Good. I, I said that to make you realize that there's nowhere on the spectrum of experience that, that a Christian might find himself. And you, those are the moments when you still need to and get to appeal to the same love and mercy and blood of Christ, okay? Um, but let me say this. You may find yourself in the next couple years saying, I'm not who I thought I was uh, because you thought I would be over, I would be through struggling with this certain struggle by then. You may think, when I'm 18, when I'm 19, when I'm 20, I won't be, have the same difficulties with the things I'm having now. And you're going to... You're going to realize that being 18, 19, and 20 doesn't fix you. Uh, and when that happens, you will have that same feeling of, I'm, I'm not who I thought I, I was, and I'm not who I thought I was going to be. And that's, again, that's, that's okay. Uh, that's the, the very great place to be as a Christian. That's when you actually grow. That's where God wants you, is realizing that you're not who you thought you were, uh, and that you need Him. Places like uh, realizing that you struggled in high school with something that you thought wouldn't be as much of a struggle in college, whether it's um, whether it's loneliness, 
uh, whether it's anger, you know, like you think, you think now, yeah, I lash out in anger all the time, but that's because I live with my parents who are crazy. And once I get to college, I won't really struggle with that anymore. And you will. And you'll find that you're still an angry person. And that's something that God has to deal with in your heart. Um, you realize it wasn't your circumstances in high school. Uh, you might realize that you're still struggling with something that you wouldn't have expected, uh, like pornography uh, or, or fear um, or insecurity. You might find yourself in college thinking, thinking. You might find yourself now thinking that when I get to college and I have different kinds of friends, I, my my friendships won't just dissolve and melt down in in constant drama. Uh, because this, that's just what it's like in high school and in college. It'll be cooler. And you get to college and you find that you're sort of, you're sort of blowing up your own friendships. And you realize, oh, maybe the reason my friendships were a problem in high school was because of me and not because of them. And all of a sudden I'm doing the same things to my friends now that I did then and I want to stop and I can't. Um, that's, that's part of the transition that's going to produce in you these experiences of like, okay... God actually has to love me here where I am and, and has to start to change me. Uh, your strengths, the things that you think you're good at will, will fail you. Um, the things that you thought you would be over by the time you're in college are still going to be there. And, and that's okay. Um, that's, th- those are the places you can grow. Uh, and now that we've sufficiently started with another sort of depressing reminder of, of that, uh, take a deep breath. Uh, college is great. You're going to have fun. Uh, and, and I want you to be, um, I want you to be excited about it. Look, I'm going to be as practical as I possibly can for this next part, even though there's sort of, in a sense, you're not going to get, not because you're dumb, because I, I, y'all, y'all are probably all smarter than me, but because there's certain things you're not going to know really what I'm saying until you experience them. Um, I'm going to try and give you as many practical applications that I can today about what you're going to experience in college in terms of who you're listening to and, and, and who's an authority and kind of the things that you can trust with the hope that when you begin to experience them, you can look back and say, uh, I don't, maybe I don't know what to do now, but there was this guy in July before my freshman year of college that said something like, this is okay, and here are some things you can do. Okay, you, Some of these issues are not going to come back up for a while, and, and, but when they do, I want you to at least be able to look back and say, I, should have ex- I could have expected this. It's okay. Don't let it unravel your life and, and find somebody to talk about it. Um, you, you're going to be faced with the question of who am I listening to uh, in a couple of ways in college. One of them, the first is going to be uh, relation, relationally, like just your friendships and stuff like that. Um, you're going to run into a, a, a scenarios where some of what's been foundational to you uh, about the Bible, about who God is and what He wants, and about what He expects of you and why that are going to get assaulted at college um, in, in sort of a social setting. So like, people are going to say, oh, you know, the only reason you think that is because you grew up in a Christian home and um, people won't say this explicitly. This isn't the kind of conversations you might have, but some of it might be. You know, the reason you think that, the reason you feel bad about what you're doing, or the reason you don't want to do that is because you're too uptight and you don't understand really what God wants. You know, all that Christian stuff is just ways that your parents or your the community you grew up in wanted to control you, and you're, that's going to sort of eat at you a little bit, potentially. Um, and your, your, your inclination, your temptation in that moment is to, is to is either isolate yourself or push back and say, no, this is right, and you're going to try and maintain your sort of Christian standard of behavior with the idea that that's what makes you a Christian and try and hold the line. Or it's going to start to sort of crumble underneath you, and you're going to start to wonder what you believe and why you believed it to begin with, okay? That's one thing that we're going to talk about more tomorrow.
in, in, when we talk about community and who you're with. The other setting that I, I kind of want to swim around in a little bit today is this. Uh, in, in an academic setting, you're going to face uh, a little bit, a little bit of um, antagonism in some settings and a lot in others. Uh, and I bet some of you have heard that before. Was it this group yesterday when we talked about things that you, you might be worried about or people have warned you about in college? It's sort of an anti-Christian environment. Somebody in here say that. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, A, a little bit, it's going to happen to some of you socially. And it's going to happen to some of you academically. And I just want to kind of give you a, a little bit of a, a, a preparation for that. Okay? Um, It's going to happen in an academic setting, uh, and, and it may already be happening some in an academic setting. How, uh, are there any of y'all who are already experiencing some level of pushback or antagonism towards Christianity, or surely you don't believe that, uh, already in high school now, whether it's in a science class or whatever? Have y'all, some, some of y'all experienced that. Um, you're going to get to college, and I think it's going to be more felt in college than it is explicitly communicated. Does that make sense? Um, where, where do you expect to feel sort of academic or intellectual pushback against, against maybe, um, maybe what your pastor believes? W- what settings would you experience, expect to experience that in college? You've got to have a little feedback from y'all. Either from a different... A uh, person like a different denomination, or either in like a class like sociology or uh, psychology, you go through the teachers and they have been brought up. Mm-hmm. Sociology, psychology, sort of st- study of human behavior as individuals, study of human behavior as groups, that kind of deal. What else? Surely you guys have been warned about these terrible things that are going to happen in the college classroom. I-, I-, I assume you're all thinking of something. Anybody just take a shot. Don't be embarrassed. Uh, some of the science classes. Science classes, biology. meaning biology, meaning like versus evolution. Right. Uh, you're going to get. You, you're going to expect to experience some of that. I'm here to tell you. Uh, you will. You could potentially experience sort of antagonism towards Christianity in any class you take. <laughs> right. Uh, art. Uh, history. Uh, Composition 101, like the first class I took in college, my professor was kind of like uh, a little dismissive of Christianity and kind of made comments. Uh, under, uh, tw- sort of um, not explicit, but enough to where you... Th- there is, depending on where you are in school, there is an, uh, an undercurrent of um, kind of a... There's an uncurrent, undercurrent of dis. Um, just this dismissive of Christianity. Like, well, I mean, Chris, what well, Christians believe, sure. Whatever. I mean, you know, if you're a Christian, or you're gonna kind of feel this kind of tug of like, oh well, yeah, like yeah, you're a youth group kid. You probably went to church camp this past summer, and you'd be like, oh no, yeah, well, I did. So <laughs> uh, that kind of thing, right? Or or oh, did you learn that at church camp? You know, that kind of. And I want you to realize that no matter who you're dealing with, and, and this is what I want you to I want to press into you right now as you're going to college. Um, the best thing that Christianity can do for you right now is to produce in you. I say Christianity. The, what you want, what I want Jesus to be doing in your heart right now is producing humility. Okay, because humility is the one thing. That those that the people who assault Christianity and that either explicitly or sort of under their breath, that's the one thing that they don't get, they don't have, and it's the one thing that they don't expect you to have, and it's really the only thing that makes a difference. And this is this is why I want to say that because all of you and and all of them, all of us, everyone is dealing with the same problem. Okay? We all want the world to make sense to us. We all want stability. We all want uh, to know why we do the things that we do. We all want to make our system fit for ourselves. Um, We want to be okay. 
so to speak. Christianity tells us that we're okay because of who Jesus is. And that's it. But everyone else in the whole world ever that has ever existed has the same need to feel okay. Um, and, and so what we do is we really shape our world around trying to feel okay. And so your PhD superstar, world-renowned biology professor, the thing that you and he share in common is that you both need to feel okay. Your world needs to make sense to you. Um, what your friends who have sort of thrown off every every shackle of morality that they sort of that you both grew up in, and they're kind of like just going off and doing the things that everybody was scared that they would do when they went to college. They're, the problem that they have and that you have is that you both need to feel okay about the world, and you're trying to do that. What we, unless uh, we're believing that only Jesus makes, uh, makes us okay, not our behavior, not our, our church affiliation, not all these things, it's Jesus that makes us okay. Unless we believe that, we're going to get caught up in the struggle with those people and we're not going to have any, we're not going to have any sense of peace about it and we're not going to have any, uh, we're not going to make a difference to them either. That's sort of a, a, a round the way, a round the block way of saying this. I don't want you to deal with these professors out of fear. I don't want you to deal with your, your friends out of fear of being wrong and having your sort of worldview crumble underneath you. Um, everyone's looking for stability, and, and there's no one exempt from that. But what you know as a Christian is that your world. Um, that we believe, sort of a foundational belief of Christianity is that you, your, your knowledge is limited. Our knowledge is limited. One, because we're creatures and God is, is the creator. There's some th things that He knows that we will never know. I think even when we're in heaven without sin, there are things about God that we will not know. That's okay. Secondly, our ability to know things is limited by our sin. In other words, we there are... We should be suspicious even of the things that we think we understand. Okay? And that's okay. Um, you're going to be in situations with your professors and... Alright, so we have like 30 minutes. I'm just going to give you as many practical sort of things that you need to remember as you're going into these settings that hopefully it will come up. You're going to run into a situation where you're, you're going to begin to feel this. Um, that you, you're in a place where sort of if this is knowledge in a, in a certain field, increasing knowledge, what's going to be sort of communicated to you, uh, even if it's sort of not explicit, is that there's a place where Christians kind of have to stop. Right? Um, let's take sort of the, the world of science or something. Um, so like you're taking all these uh, science classes for majors and you're, you know, biology and then you do this and like you get, this is all that you have to sort of know about science to say become a doctor or something like that, a medical, a medical doctor. Um, but if you, but like there's all this stuff out here that you really, you can't continue to be a Christian and know this. That's what's sort of going to be communicated to you in, in some settings. Does that make... Y'all kind of feel what I'm saying? Um, this is not true. Okay? One thing I want you to, to know that, and, and to use... I mean, to, this is just an example. This is every field. It's not just science. It's science and history and mathematics and, and um, philosophy and psychology and education and whatever field you're going into... Uh, uh, this is what you need to know. There are, there are people in the same field as your professors who might be, or your peers, that are sort of playing into this idea. There are people in their field that are smarter than them that believe what your pastor does about the Bible. Okay? I want you all to know that. Not because I want you to 
fight against that professor necessarily with that idea, but that can kind of put you at ease, okay? Like, this is, this is a myth, that, th that there's all this stuff out here that you can't believe if you're a Christian. Or, or that you'll never, you, you have to kind of leave your Christianity somewhere. It's not true. It doesn't matter what field you're in, there are, and no matter what, how brilliant you think the professor is that's teaching you, there, there is someone that probably he, even he or she would admit that's smarter than them, farther along in their field, more accomplished, that actually believes the same thing in their mind that you're Southern Baptist, or I'm sorry, Southern Baptist, Southern Evangelical, Presbyterian, or Reformed, or whatever goofball ordained minister like myself believes okay, about the Bible. Don't believe that, that, smart, that, that smart people, that Christians stop at a certain level. It's not true. Um, it's not true. But so, so let that, I, I don't tell you that to like get you to ready to fight somebody. I, get, I tell you that to let you sort of relax and believe that, it's, that you're, not in a, uh, you're not in a fight for your academic integrity every minute of the day with a professor. You can, you can be in a class, you can learn from a professor and not be, um, and not worry that you're going to all of a sudden become, uh, you're, not like, you're not stopping here. Or, and you're not blowing through and abandoning your Christianity. Uh, I'll say this too, you're going to meet professors that you love that you respect, that treat you fairly, that treat you kindly, that don't shove their views down your throat, that, that treat you better than your high school teachers, that treat you better than your coaches, that seem to respect you more than your parents respect you, uh, that, that seem to love you better than your pastor at home love you, seem to, and, and they don't necessarily... Um, believe what you do believe what you believe about the Bible um, that's going to happen you're not going to be out there and it's only like these angry atheist antagonistic hateful people that are trying to get you to believe evolution against your will like that's not that's not going to happen you're going to you're going to meet professors that you love and respect and, and appreciate and learn a lot from that aren't trying to like get you to stop going to church um, that don't believe what your pastor believes and what you believe and what you've sort of the, the environment that you've been brought up in. Um, I, I want to prepare you for that to happen. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't change the fact that their world is shaped by deception just like your world is shaped by deception. Okay? The beauty about being a Christian, Christian is that we get, we get to know that and be okay with it because we know that Jesus is dealing with it in us. Outside of, outside of Christ, all people get, only option people have is to make their world make sense um, on their terms. And, and that's, that's a scary place to be. Does that make sense so far? Y'all following me? This I don't want this to be too philosophical, but so I, I want you. To, I want to say this. Don't think that, that. Know this. It doesn't matter who they are. There's someone smarter than that person in their field that they would recognize as a smarter. Even if I don't know who they are and they don't know who they are, it's true. There's somebody out there that's smarter than them. That's a Christian. Okay, trust me. Um, So don't, so don't be traumatized when you meet a brilliant professor who seems smart, he's very likable, or she's very engaging. Fascinating professor who takes an interest in you. They have no category for Christianity and they have contempt for it even. Don't let that surprise you. Don't let it traumatize you. And here's another thing. Don't, don't let that cause you to resent your upbringing. Okay? I, I talk with a lot of students who get to college and they start to have their, their eyes opened to the fact that there, there's more ideas out there than they, than they knew about and it, and it, just, it just ticks them off. And it, and it makes, us, makes them mad at their parents or their church or their high school teacher or somebody that sort of nurtured them growing up because we think 
Because you might have been led to believe that there are these monsters out there on the college campus that are trying to like brainwash you and that's not what you're experiencing. Don't resent your upbringing because of that. Be patient. Show them grace as well as you're showing these professors grace. Go home and talk to your pastor about things like this if you feel, if you feel that tension. Um, but you, it, the, the beautiful thing about college is you get to learn to be gracious to people in, in, way, in, in lots new, of new ways. And um, I encourage you not to be resentful of, of, the, of, the, of the setting in which you grew up. I did for a while. I really struggled with that. Um, and some of you will, but I want to encourage you that if, if Jesus does nothing else for you, um, I hope that He'll produce in you hum- humility in the way that you deal with your professors and in the way that you deal with um, where you came from. Um, I want you to believe that, to, to remember that you're not dumb. You're not dumb for believing what you believe if you, if you continue to believe what you do about, um, about Scripture. Don't be resentful of your upbringing. Uh, because here's the thing. Central to, to, to Christianity sort of foundational ideas... Is that is one that God is God is the authority because He created us. He He, he is infinitely wise. He He is uh, He is truth. Um, he is truth as we know it. He, he is the sum. Uh, he is the. How am I trying to say that? He's ultimate truth. He's infinitely wise. He's infinitely powerful. Um, he He is ultimate. Okay. Um, that's foundational to Christianity. Secondly, second thing, this another thing that's foundational to Christianity is that we're not only creatures, uh, but we're but we're sinful. Okay, so we, as I said earlier, we are. There's something wrong with the way that we see things, and we um, we can be suspicious of the way that we even interpret uh, what we think we know. The third thing that we know about uh, a third thing that we know about Christianity and uh, that's foundational to Christianity is that God is loving and merciful and wise. Okay, and because that's true, uh, we, we also see in the story of Scripture that He restores, that He's re- He is redeeming us, that God is at work, um, but we're still finite. We're still creatures. You are, and your professors are. Um, God doesn't promise that we'll know everything. He does promise that He loves us, that He gives us wisdom, and that He buys our trust with the blood of His Son. Okay? And and I think that's important for us to remember. When when somebody says... it, It sounds... It sounds trivial. It sounds um, like a cop-out. It sounds like something a three-year-old would say when, when you say, well, why do you believe that? And I say, well, because Jesus said it. You know, like, oh, well, God told me. It, God, not God told me, but God says it in His Word. Um, that sounds like a cop-out. But when we're saying that as Christians, we're, and I, I want you to say that from this position, you're saying that from a position of saying, I'm trusting someone who tells me something is true and then buys my trust with the blood of His Son. Your professors and the people that are struggling with this, I want you to treat them with grace because two, th- two foundational things are true of them. They know, they know that there's ultimate truth out there. Maybe even if they don't believe it's God. Two, they know that they don't know everything, and they're and they're trying to know everything. They're they're moving towards that, but they don't believe that God loves them the way that we believe that. Therefore, they have to make the world work on their terms, and that's a scary place to be. That's actually where we would all be and, and where we feel ourselves going at times when we chase after things to make ourselves feel better. Right? That, that's some of what sin is. We, we go after things to make us 
feel better, to make our world work the way we want it to, and it ends up not working. What we get to do with that sin, when we run after things that don't work, we get to take that sin and say, Jesus, this is what repentance says. Say, Jesus, I went after this thinking that it would satisfy me, and it doesn't. And, and I give it to Jesus, and He pays for it. People who don't have Christ, when they realize that things aren't working for them, that things aren't paying off, that their world, the way that they see the world, the knowledge that they think they have is crumbling underneath them, they have nowhere to go but to, to continue to try and figure it out on their own terms. And that will end up making someone... Um, that, that produces a, a real problem for people. That, that's a really hard and scary place to be. Um, and, and you have to realize that, that that's what people are doing. That, that's the world that people are living in that don't have Christ. Uh, that's the world that you would be living in if you didn't have a Savior to take these struggles to. Does that make sense? So I, I hope that above all else... As you begin to experience this tension in college between what you're sort of under, beginning to understand about yourself or the world or, 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 or different things out there and, and you feel a little bit uh, lied to or, or something as you're growing up, believe this. Um, you, you would be in the same place that they were were it not for Jesus. And that's what I hope can produce... Uh, compassion in our hearts. What, what I don't want you to do is, is to go into your college class and begin to um, to feel this tension and then push back against the professor and stand up and say, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, because that's not going to get you anywhere, especially as an 18, 19, 20 year old. Uh, I, I do not want to equip you guys to go in and, and fight with your professors. I want to equip you to go in and learn from them what you can learn and, 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 and be patient and be humble and pray for them and love them and do excellent work as a student. Do your best. Because God, believe it or not, God has actually placed those professors there to teach you, to get you through college, to get you to know what you need to know. And, and God's still in control of that and you don't have to freak out. Um, and, and you certainly don't need to... Uh, as long as the professor is not putting you in a place where you have to um, totally violate your conscience, you can just do your best and, and, and learn from them. Does that make sense? Um, and there's other things that you need to be doing, which we'll talk about tomorrow when we talk about community. But... But I want you to remember that you, when these things start, when you start to feel this tension in college, um, that you can take a deep breath and remember that God's authority doesn't conflict with with limited knowledge. Um, remember, your professors are dealing with insecurity. Remember that they're dealing with it without having, if they are sort of adamantly non-Christians, they're dealing with it without having been convinced that that God is merciful and loving and powerful, right? Um, and, and the other thing, I, the other thing that I would encourage you, as you feel this tension both from your peers about sort of the commitments that you've made about things you're going to do and not going to do, and they sort of antagonize you about that, well, oh yeah, of course, See, why, are you do, why don't you just come with us? Like, you're, you're just... You're such a goody-goody, or you're just doing what your parents... You, everybody's trying to keep you from doing what you think you should do, or whatever. Um, both when you're dealing with them, and when you're feeling this tension, academic or intellectual tension from your from professors or academic setting. Um, don't, don't panic, but, but also realize this. You, um, you need to find community that will help you with your relational things. And I want to tell you this. You, one thing that you can do is you can find a, a professor. Um, you can find Christian professors at your university. Almost, uh, I, I can almost, I can guarantee it, I think. Unless, you can find them. And, and here's the deal. Even if you're struggling, even if there's a biology class that's sort of stressing you out because you feel like it's making you... Um, it's just causing all kinds of 
frustration for you based on where, where, what you were brought up to believe and all this kind of stuff. It doesn't matter, even if it's a biology, but I, there's a history professor at Southern Miss where I work. He's a, one of my closest friends and he's brilliant. He has a PhD in history. And, uh, but I send, even students that are struggling in biology classes, I send them to this guy to talk sometimes because he gets it. Because he's lived in a world for, for 8 to 12 years of school as a, as a student slash you know, PhD candidate. And then in years and years after that, he's in his 60s, of, of living in a university community and interacting with people that, that are antagonistic to Christianity, he understands what you're going through. And he is, those are the kind of people that you can find and talk to them. Find the RUF campus minister at your campus and say, can you help me talk? To, is there a professor that you know that I can talk to just to sort of wade through this stuff? Um, so find a, a Christian professor that, to, to help you think through this. They're out there. And it doesn't have to be in the field. If you're a biology major and you can't find a single biology professor that sort of professes Christianity, in fact, it may, yeah, just, just find somebody. Get your campus minister to help you find them. Uh, talk to your pastor. Find somebody in the Christian community that can help you do that. And we'll talk about that tomorrow a little bit more as we talk about community. Um, and I'll also say this. Well, let me ask you this. How, have any of y'all... What are the, what are the sort of the, the warnings that y'all are getting about, about your experience that you're going to have in college in, in, this, in this way? I, I'm, surely I'm not saying things that you guys have never heard, right? What are, what are some of the warnings that you get about when you're going off to college? That you're going to hear from people. Somebody give me freshman some. Freshman 15. Okay, freshman 15, right. Um, but, but what about, what about the, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. What about the, uh, but like people said, hey, you're going to go to college and it's just, somebody in here mentioned that college is anti-Christian atmosphere. He, he said that in here yesterday. Somebody remember? You don't have to admit it. But, but the idea that, um, that everybody's going to be like, that you're going to feel this gloom and doom anti-Christian in your in the academic setting. Uh, have y'all y'all hear any of that kind of stuff? It's like that movie, God's, God's not dead. God's not dead. That movie. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anybody else? Y'all work with me here a little bit. Just like in general. Yeah, just in general. Someone told me to know my limits on how fast I get drunk before I go. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good example. Okay. Right. People give you these, they kind of give you these warnings, fearful, to, to incite fear in you, right? And in the academic setting, it's often like, hey, be careful. Your biology professors are going to like brainwash you into believing evolution and all this kind of stuff. Does that make, is that landing at all like your parents are worried that you're going off to this crazy state university where there's liberal professors and all this kind of stuff? that landing at all with you guys? Okay. Let me say this. And, and again, look, I've talked for two straight hours on this with another group too, and I can't remember what I've said to you, but um, I did say you're going to meet great professors that you love and respect and appreciate you and you appreciate them that are not Christians, right? Did I say that to you all already? Okay. Um, I'm going to say it's, it's rare, depending on where you go to school, it's going to be, it's never going to happen where a professor is going to basically put you in a position where you have to like recant your faith, <laughs> you know, like you're never gonna have. It's very rare that you're gonna be in a place where you have to totally violate your conscience to get an A or something like that. There may be situations where you have to look and say, based on this information as it's provided, what would I expect? You know, what do I think the correct answer is going to be? That's okay. You can do that and learn that and all that kind of stuff. Based on this understanding of evolution, what would the answer to this question be? You don't have to violate your conscience there. But there are going to be... It's, that's going to be very rare. What you are going to experience more than that is sort of an undercurrent, especially in non-science classes. Basically, if you're in science, if you're going into science or pre-med or whatever, I would say you're, there's going to be some struggle, but I wouldn't worry about sort of waking up one day and being like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm like this far from becoming an atheist. I, 
because of my professors. You may have other reasons. But you're going to be in classes like your history classes and your philosophy classes and your um, literature classes and your sociology classes where they talk about uh, sort of or especially in your religion classes if you take religion in a secular university um, which I think you should you're going to come into places where there's just sort of this suggestion that there's going to be things like well yeah I mean of course if you're a Christian you would believe that or Christians think this or Christians do that and they're going to sort of try and paint you in the corner and you're going to res- want to resist and raise your hand and, and object and in some settings you certainly should um, but always keep in mind that that uh, that one of the best ways that you can interact with people uh, and, and gain ground with people and, and, and be an, be evidence of Christ's work in your life is humility and um, hard work in in those classes and 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 real and realizing interacting with them not in a condescending way but in a humble way knowing that their that their that the idea of christianity is so crazy because it means that someone else deals with your problem that it's hard for them to believe and it's even scarier for them to shape your life around it, their life around it, because the reality is that's really what we that's really what we do as Christians. Is we we give our problems, we we give our struggles, we admit our brokenness, and we say that someone else deals with it. That's why it's good news, right? And for someone else, and that's um, that's laughable. That's ridiculous. That doesn't fit the academic model. That doesn't fit the world success model, right? Does that make sense? So those of us who really believe the gospel are those of us who, who, when somebody sort of objects to the way that we see the world, um, those of us who have actually been changed by Christ's love and somebody objects to the way that we see the world, our first response should be like, I know. Right? I, can, I know. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to think that like all of the crap that I've done wrong and all the stuff that I continue to struggle with and all of the fact and the fact that I am like a mess is fixed by Jesus. Slowly, but once and for all, but also slowly as I grow as a Christian, the fact that, that, that He, that, that the Creator of the universe paid for my sin is ridiculous. Right? And that's foundational to your own understanding of your existence. And that has to help, that has to affect the way that you inter- interact with people. Does that make sense? Can you see where humility sort of starts there? Um, and I want, that to, I want that to shape the way that you even interact with people, realizing especially people that have spent 30 years in, the fi- in some field, um, basically investing their life, centering their whole existence on s- the study of, you know, whatever. Uh, and for an 18-year-old, the, the best thing that you as an 18-year-old can do is to, to love people, to be patient with people, to encourage people, to pray for people, and realize that the foundation of your, uh, of your whole existence um, is something that the world does not get. Uh, which, is why, um, which is why there are people at every level that get it and don't get it. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? I'm, that, that can be it for this, for this hour. I, this is a tough topic to teach with you guys because um, those of you who are going to college this year, that, that if we met a year from today, all of y'all would have questions or comments about things that you'd ex- you had experienced. And, um, and so it's kind of hard to talk about it now. But I, I want you to know that if you do nothing else, remember that that um, some of these things I said, right? There are smarter people than these professors in the field. Don't resent your upbringing. Um, find a professor to talk to. And uh, humility and grow. The world is not spinning out of control if you have a professor uh, that's not a Christian. Okay.
Um, any questions, comments, concerns? All right. Um, let me uh, let me close in prayer. And tomorrow we're going to talk about community. We're going to talk about practical ways that you can. Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to mention this. This is a book that I recommend. Has anybody heard of this book, The Reason for God by Tim Keller? Has anybody read it? Okay, good. You, this is something you... It's $12.50 here. You, should, you could buy this. You should buy it. Uh, even if you don't read it. Because this book... Um, <laughs> what did I say? Oh, even if you don't read it immediately. Take it with you to college. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Uh, <laughs> That was a good one. Um, because it interacts with these, these it interacts with questions like um, that you're going to hear on the college campus, like why does God allow suffering in the world? How can loving God send people to hell? Why isn't Christianity more inclusive? How can there only be one true religion? Hasn't science disproved Christianity? Those are the types of things that are going to swim around in the world that you're living in next year. And this guy is not. This is this is not going to equip you to like stand up and like fight with your professor. What it is going to do, it's going to allow you to to, to listen to smart Christians wrestle with these ideas and it's going to help calm your your anxieties about it and it's going to show you uh, why Jesus matters in those in, in those conversations okay this is a great book to have also because New York City which is where this guy works is a pastor it's going to be no matter where you're going to, going to go to school there's going to be an element of sort of a swirl of ideas and stuff on the college campus that's not reflective of the community that you live in anybody going to, to Mississippi State next year from in here anybody going to where are y'all going to school Tuscaloosa okay so Tuscaloosa as a community is going to be your normal southern town but inside Tuscaloosa 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 there's this little community of college students and professors up there where there's going to be swirling ideas that are more representative of what it would be like in a big city like New York so that's why that's, that book's going to be really good for you guys um, and I commend it, all of you to read it uh, let me pray for us and then uh, we'll let, let you go Father we thank you for this day and I pray that you would use all of these um, all of these ramblings and all of these uh, conversations to sort, at least imprint on us and on our hearts and on our memories uh, something that will allow us in, in a year from now to look back and say um, and remember some of these things uh, and to be patient with our friends uh, to hold fast to uh, the love of a Savior who has bought our trust with His blood, uh, that when we struggle with who to listen to, that will at least uh, be uh, um, part, of, uh, part of the conversation that we're having with ourselves, that, that, Jesus, um, uh, that Jesus, though He calls us to, to difficult things, and though there are things that we feel like we may not know, uh, that He has uh, asked us to trust Him and He's He showed us His faithfulness to us with, with His own blood. Um, help us to see that and experience that uh, and, and to run, run there as we struggle in the next couple of years. Uh, Father, I pray that You be with us the rest of this day. Keep us safe. Uh, keep us um, free from... Uh, the distractions and the worries of this world that choke the word, uh, making it unfruitful. Uh, we need you. I need to believe these things more and more, and I pray that you would help us all to do that uh, for your glory and for the good of your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, y'all, thanks.